Reassuring sounds, the Public Investment Corporation is the fund manager on behalf of the Government Employees Pension Fund, or the GEPF. So it is actually the board of the GEPF uh, setting parameters for the investment of government pension monies. The GEPF is Africa's largest pension fund, more than 1.2 million active members. Uh, the management of this money affects more than 400,000 pensioners from more than 300 government departments. So that's just to give you uh, a sense of the scale of the uh, funds involved. Well, to discuss, we're joined by the Principal Executive Officer of the Government Employees Pension Fund, or GEPF, and that's Abel Sitole. Thank you for being with us, uh, Mr. You. Sitole. Thank you so there's a little me. bit of confusion. If government says we want money for SAA, we demand it, who says yes or no? Is it the PIC or the GEPF? Uh, th th that's, that's probably a much slightly more complicated response in a sense that uh, the GPF, like all uh, pension funds, does, uh, under the normal course of doing its business, invest in uh, the bonds that government issues uh, yes. in the first instance, and of course then that the government can use in whichever way it wants to use it. And it also invests in the bonds that uh, state-owned ent enterprises also issue. Um, and again, we do that uh, because it actually makes sense for the GPF to do so in, in terms of meeting the liabilities that we have or the promises that we make to our members mm. and to our pensioners. So that's actually quite normal. So, so in the normal course of actually investing, the, the, the GPF will give that mandate to the PIC and then actually sets parameters in terms of the extent to which it can actually invest in, in, in the bonds of government, in the, in the, in the bonds of state enterprises. But to go beyond that, the PIC will have to come to the board of the GEPF uh, to do so. Do you have the power, say there's mounting concern about state-owned entities and, and uh, falling trust, could you say don't invest in state-owned entities? Do you have that power? The GPF has that power. And, and government cannot bypass the GEPF no, to go to the government PIC. cannot bypass the, the why, why is there the such government. confusion then? Because this, all the reporting has been about um, a government trying to access the PIC. I think Treasury even suggested that there uh, may be PIC, a partnership around SAA. So, so why is there that confusion? Well, I, th I think that for anybody to suggest that they can actually use the assets of the GPF, there's nothing wrong in that because we, we are the, a, a, a significant holder of assets in, in, in the South African market. So anybody who wants to borrow, to invest, will naturally consider the GPF as a potential funder for whatever activities. But I'm saying they're not uh, saying the GPF, they're, they're talking about the PIC. Well, the PIC, the, 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 I think the, 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 we need to make a distinction between uh, the government as a shareholder of the PIC and the PIC as a manager of assets. Mm. Um, when, the, when the PIC manages assets on, on behalf of its customers, it does it as any other asset manager. And from that perspective, it takes its direction in terms of how to manage those assets from the owners of the assets. And the owners of the assets, the GPF, it's not the government. The government does not own the assets of the GPF. So the, the government cannot tell the PIC how to invest the, the assets of the GPF. For that, the PIC has to come to the GPF. But the government, the shareholder of the corporate entity, the, the PIC. And now they can direct it to do whatever they want, but they can kind of direct it to actually uh, Okay, use so the you GPF are the assets. caretakers of the, I think it's heading to one and a half trillion rand. It's 1.67 trillion. Wow, 1.67 trillion rand yeah. uh, in the government pension fund. Yes. You are the caretakers, you and your board. Well, the board, yes, yeah. sir. And, and I just am a functionary of the board. Okay, let's get some things out of the way. Did, did uh, government come and talk about SAA with you? No, they have not. Not at all? Not at all. All right, so that's off the cards. What is your general attitude to helping state-owned entities if needed? We do not help state-owned enterprises. We invest in state-owned mm. <laughs> enterprises. So the conditions of investment apply across the board in terms of how do you make the decisions uh, to invest in state-owned enterprises. And there's a number of very basic things, maybe slightly complicated in terms of how you do it in, 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 in making the investment decisions. But what we're interested in is if we're investing in government or state-owned enterprises is, uh, number one, do we get any guarantees on the investment that we make? Because that's very significant in terms of meeting the obligations to the pensioners and the members. Is the, is the, is the return that we're going to get from that investment sufficient to meet our, our requirements in terms of the risk that we actually are exposed to in investing in those entities? Mm. Uh, and of course, to get a return, again, to be able to meet the obligations. And if, if that is met, then we will consider to mm. do so. So presumably you would want a lot of guarantees uh, around SAA, say, if, if you went in. If we went into, if we were to invest in SAA, I think we would 
initially, of course, we will, uh, we will do, and uh, the PIC has done this, the, the, they have to actually investigate if the entity itself is worth investing in. Before we even talk about guarantees, mm. is, is, is this a viable investment uh, for, for the pension fund? If the answer is yes, then we go and say, okay, so what are we getting in return for the investment that we're making? And a guarantee will be significant, uh, but so will be the return that we'll be getting for the risk that we'll be taking in mm. investing in the entity. So presumably it could be a good idea at, at some point I don't think now. I, I, I suspect that's the case. Oh, again, I, I think the, the, the answer that we always give is that for now we have not been approached. Mm -hmm. uh, but if, if, if the terms and conditions uh, were right for the GPF, not for anybody else, if the terms and conditions under which we will be in asked to invest in any, any, any entity mm -hmm. were right for the GPF in terms of the obligations we have to our members and pensioners, then we'll have to consider that. Well, can you give me an idea of how much of this 1.6 trillion rand, so, so this is more than the nuclear uh, deal, Let, let's just put it in that perspective, how much is in um, state-owned entities in, in the form of bonds and things like that? Uh, we, we have the information in our annual report for each okay. of the major is state it, is it enterprises. Is it massive or, or a um, small portion? Well, I mean, we, we, we invest over 300 billion in the, in, in the sovereign South Africa uh, as an entity. Uh, and then, of course, with the, there's a, uh, a cumulative total for the, for the different uh, state-owned enterprises. So I can tell you, on average, what we do in the major one that people are content in. We have about uh, close to about 84 billion in, 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 uh, in ESCOM. We have over 24 billion in uh, Sandral. So that's the kind mm. of figures that you're mm. talking about. Say government decided uh, for whatever reason that nuclear was going ahead uh, and, and really pressurized you uh, to, to release the funds because remember that South Africa as a country is getting into debt. We want to be very careful. Do you have the, the, the clout to, to push back? Oh, again, on behalf of your members? Again, I mean, the, 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 the clout is not about Abel Citoli or anybody. It's about what actually is provided for in, 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 in law, what mm -hmm. can be done or cannot be done in, term, in terms of law. So the government couldn't just simply put pressure on the GPF to, to invest for any other reason yeah. other than actually making sure that the GPF follows um, it's, it's, it's the legal prescripts and the mandate that it provides right. the, the, to the PIC. So, so your attitude is, is very rational and protective over those funds uh, affecting pensioners. But what if a new board comes in? Who appoints the board? When uh, does the, the current board's term expire? Uh, to start with the last one, the current board's term ends uh, uh, in 2018 in April. Uh, we've already started the process of, of, of electing some of, of the, the, the board members. But to, to, to do now give clarity in terms of how the, 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 the board is structured. The board uh, has a full complement of 16 board members in total, eight of whom are appointed by the employer, and then eight are appointed by uh, uh, employees via their representative in labor. And one, is, um, one of those is in, uh, elected by the uh, pensioners and one by the representative of the armed forces. Um, okay. so, so, that's so it's how not it's treasury conditioned. alone or, or No, it is like not. It, 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 like any other pension fund in South Africa, half is employer uh, uh, representative and the other half is member representative mm. and pensioner representative. We, we've run out of, of time. Are you uh, hearing concerns on behalf of government pensioners and, and what is your message to them? But I think the message is, is, is to say that what concerns people most, mostly is about 46 billion. Uh, that's what's in, in, in unlisted space. The rest of the assets are actually invested in the open market where there is no potential for somebody to go and interfere with that. So that's the first thing. The second thing to, to, to members is to understand that the GPF is a defined benefit fund, which means that their benefits have nothing to do, well, to say nothing, maybe it's an extreme statement, but their benefits are based on um, what is in the GP law. So it's provided for in the terms of the rules of, of the GPF. That it's not dependent on the contributions that we make or the investment that we make. But of course, as the GPF, our main focus is to ensure that the investments are invested properly because if we don't invest it properly, ultimately we'll have to go back to, gov to government to say, please cover the shortfall. Government will then have to go back to taxpayers to say, we need to actually fund this, the shortfall. So it, it, is, it is very, very important for the GPF to ensure that the fund is fully funded in, at, at all times to be able to meet the, the, the promises to members and, and pensioners. And the PSC has been performing well. Do you have confidence so far they've in, done very in well. Mr. Majila as and, well. And, well? So far we have confidence in, in the GPF and we definitely have confidence in, in, in Dr. Dan. But of course, we are not involved in the governance of the PIC. So whatever mm -hmm. the governance of PIC 
issues are, those do not involve the GPF directly, although we do have interest in terms of how that actually transpires. All right, so complicated, but the message is that the, that money is being safely uh, guarded by the GPF board. Thank you for coming yes. in, uh, Mr. Abel Sotole from the Government Employees Pension Fund, or GEPF. Now to uh, 